So if we've dealt with the concept of electric potential in the case of a uniform electric field. However, a lot of times we deal with charges that are organized in either point charges or in this case, a plastic sphere. As long as the charges are uniformly distributed, so here you have a sphere with charges kind of uniformly distributed, not all bunched up in the corner or anything, we can actually treat this as long as we're not inside of it, if we're talking about the surface, we can treat this like a point charge right at the center. So you can imagine all that charge being squeezed into the very center at a point. In this case, we got picocoulomb, that's 10 to the minus 12, by the way. And then we can talk about a point right on the surface, which is half of the diameter away. So instead of the 0.5 centimeter, it's going to be 0.25 or a centimeter in terms of the radius, which is sticking a couple more zeros on to get in meters. Now, potential or change in potential as we dealt with with a uniform field can be worked out quite easily using that. However, in the case of a point charge though, you have a very funky inverse square relationship going on. So not uniform, we can't simply multiply these out. What we have to do instead is say you look at the curve, looking at the distance and the size of the electric field for a positive charge, you can say it kind of starts out high, very near to it and slowly peters out to zero, inverse square, right? Approximately right here for this little delta D, we would have that much electric field and therefore that's my negative delta V. But a little later on, if you're far away, you're over here, your electric field is much less, and you do a lot less change in potential. Essentially what this builds up to be is the change in potential, similar to work, is the area under the curve. And for this curvy thing, we would actually have to use calculus, but I don't expect you to know calculus, so I'll give you the results right now. As we work out the math, it turns out that the potential is given by positive k times q over r, not r square. This q, of course, is the charge causing the v, not the charge feeling the potential energy, with the very important implication that v is equal to zero at infinitely far away. The math works out nice and pretty like this only if you assume that way out here v is equal to zero. And note that you can also have negative potential if you have a negative charge and that's perfectly okay. That just means as you put a positive charge approaching a negative charge, you're going to get some energy out because it wants to be there. So now that we're equipped with this lovely formula, we can just plug everything in and work out the number. V is equal to 8.988 times 10 to the nine. All the units are gonna work out times 40 times 10 to the minus 12 for the pico coulombs. And you have that for your radius. No square this time because we're talking about potential. And so it's 144 volts positive because it's near a positive charge. Again, relative to a zero that's infinitely far away. So this formula that I've given you, that's for the potential of a point charge. And you use this whenever you are dealing with point charges as opposed to a uniform electric field.